decentralized law. A monopoly is the exclusive possession or control of the supply or trade in a commodity or service throughout a geographical region. Law is the service of deciding how to move forward in a situation of conflict or transaction between two or more parties. This essential service of law is one that people rely on heavily for maintaining order and accountability throughout the world. A city is a law monopoly, as is a county and a state, since there is no competition of law in either of those areas. Each is an extension of the same monopoly, like branches from the tree that has killed all other trees within the forest. To have impartial, rational, and logically based decision-making services to turn to for conflict resolution is a vital part of what maintains civilization and prevents disorder and chaos. With law being a vital service that maintains peace and order, and that keeps people accountable for conducting themselves harmoniously, we have to then examine why it would be favorable for us to allow the monopolization of this vital service. As with any monopoly, the service or product provided generally becomes lower quality and costlier, and also quality of customer service declines greatly, and the people it serves come to dread involvement with it, though they be without other option. Monopolies have advantage and use that advantage to serve their interests, which equates to the abuse of their position at disadvantage of the rest. Their drive to provide mutual benefit is typically countered by their knowledge that there is no alternative to which the disapproving may turn. Institutions of central planning are law monopolies, or in other words, centralized law. Those seeking dominion over their fellow human family are drawn into these positions of law monopoly where they can indulge in their piece of the dominion pie. This video examines the possibility that the services of law can be provided in open competition without any decline in accountability or order and, in fact, strong likelihood for greatly increased order, accountability, and effectiveness, efficiency, and quality of service and customer service. Law being a service that can be heavily abused if monopolized, it is predicted that the decentralization of law will be our chance at ending the most violent tradition of the last 10,000 years, nationalism. Of all the industries that can be monopolized, it is law that can be most egregiously abused. For the greatest of evils mankind has ever had to endure, under law, there is no industry that cannot be controlled which makes law the industry through which monopolization brings greatest power. There has not ever been a peaceful monopoly that was sustainable against open competition. The only monopolies that can be sustained are the same that use violence to sustain themselves. If they are peaceful, they eventually find themselves competing with others who choose to compete, which is healthy for all involved. The monopolization of law is government. The monopolized geographical region of a government is called a nation. Governments create standing laws, laws that stay in effect over a region regardless of their often partial, arbitrary, and logically invalid nature. Standing laws created by governments often favor governments and favor the corporations that lobby for government favoring. This behavior is made possible through the mere might and size of the unchecked bully of the region, the law monopoly or government. The manipulation of laws to favor, select parties, and increasingly centralize other industries to better channel revenues to central collection, while tightening reins on said industries for firmer control of their means of production, is the agenda of a law monopoly, which commonly seeks its own growth in unfortunate disregard for the effect its measures have on lives. There are no standing laws in decentralized law. The only laws that take hold form organically due to standing principle. In decentralized law, there cannot be a standing law decreed by a party, else that party has made themselves a law monopolist, which action is not achievable in decentralized law. Rather, decentralized law requires standing principle. Widespread acceptance of a particular universal principle must precede the advent of decentralized law. So which principle requires our widespread acceptance? 
the non-aggression principle. Law has long required universalization of non-aggression. It is not acceptable for one to steal from another or from another to steal from one. The universalization has, however, been given exception throughout the ages. Governments, those monopolies of law, grant themselves exemption from the universal non-aggression standards expected by all others in a society. Governments give themselves powers to tax, confiscate, seize, take, detain, bomb, and otherwise aggress against others, even without logical, valid basis. Due to the monopolized status of their law, none have power to challenge it, unless there has been created a limited path through which to seem as if an individual may have effect on the law. Protesting, voting, and petitioning are great examples of government-issued illusions of individuals' effect on political outcomes. Non-aggression, when brought to its logical conclusion, requires that we bring about an environment of decentralized law, since it is only through initiatory violence that its antithesis, centralized law, is maintained. Do no harm. The non-aggression principle, though very basic and void of specific instructions, is the hope that any of us have for greater freedom, prosperity, and a brighter future than nationalism provides. This principle, basic as it may be, is a much stronger foundation for concluding to sound law decisions than the arbitrary and biased opinions of government lawmakers. In decentralized law, Though there cannot be standing law decreed, there can be standing law that organically takes form in the same manner that language takes form, even immediately upon implementation, as would be the case for obvious deeds like murder, theft, vandalism, each being violation of person or property, also known as aggression. Organic law would correspond with the non-aggression principle. Non-aggression is the universal standard on which any civilization is built, with firms competing for their subscribers to their services of law and protection, and with market expectation for impartiality and transparency. The endeavor to dive into the philosophy of non-aggression and provide fair and just decisions would be highly incentivized. Services funded through charities would be able to protect the poor. Greater quality of life though even impoverished, is a key effect of free market innovation. Once the belief in government fades, along with the belief that government has everyone's needs covered, new solutions will rise for all aspects of welfare, including law and protection for those who cannot afford it. Police, as they are now, are monopolized, and their abuses of power do manifest. There is not a firm to call when pulled over by a police officer. There is not a reliable check to limit their exercise of might. In decentralized law, there is mutual accountability. One is not above reproach. In centralized law, the law is always above reproach, almost always. To speak against one of higher office or handle a flag in an unapproved manner may render penalty, though such speech may have been outcry due to very real abuse of power. The concern one may have that the decentralization of law can also be abused is settled by the understanding of its function of mutual watchdogging, of fraudulent conduct, and the free market dynamics of reputability and individual preference over competition. In decentralized law, no firm offering impartiality of decisions may take monetary bribe for paid off decisions without the risk of incurring charges of fraud from a party who can prove it. Firms also rely on their reputation to get more subscribers. Being in competition, they cannot risk even the slightest suspicion of biased decisions. Their process would be transparent, and their reasoning would require strong basis, with the world as scrutinizing onlookers, driving their incentive to demonstrate complete trustworthiness, cooperation and competition in balance ratio while interacting with other firms is the necessity of a successful law service provider. Agreements or treaties between various companies to uphold the universal non-aggression practices and save one another the hassle and embarrassment of exposing messy maleficence and intertwining with the laborious task of discerning evidence and impartial decision from enforcement of said decision would be happily arrived at through cooperation. In other words, no firm 
group or individual is better off operating outside the bounds of the non-aggression standard due to its universal nature and how it so drastically impacts person and property, which all humans universally safeguard. In an atmosphere of competition of law, a firm creates a decision, but the parties can use methods of seeking alternative decisions. Decisions in this atmosphere of choice of law are merely estimations, like home appraisals are attempts to predict the market value of a home, and diagnoses are a doctor's attempt to arrive at the accurate condition. The decision produced by one firm is not final, but can be challenged by outside services for its impartiality and basis. A disputing party can mutually agree to move on to another firm or for another decision. The precise functions would be arrived to by evolution of innovations. But most important is that nobody is above reproach in decentralized law, and it is for this reason that mutual accountability can abound. It is not feasible to predict the precise process through which the numerous parties of law services would interact and cooperate. But innovation simplifies complexities and empowers individualism. The risk of seeking dominion over a people who have grown accustomed to a high degree of freedom would likely manifest in use of force to prevent such dominion as none have weapons advantage in such open markets and therefore established decentralization prevails over attempts at centralization. The dynamics of decentralized law prevent the merging of companies in attempt to monopolize and such actions can be anticipated to come with swift financial consequences among others. Abuses are open to market disapproval in such an environment and the outcome is truly the will of the people. Wherein widespread delusion was the power of groups to become governments, decentralization of communication has bombarded with competition those scripted and censored media monopolies that fed propaganda to the masses. Increasingly, the emerging technologies make ruling a greater risk and challenge. The inevitability is that technology will make ruling impossible. Thus, the only way to proceed is through decentralization of all matters pertaining to law. Where there was once monopoly of law, there will be open competition. Where there was once monopoly of finance, there will be competing currencies of all kinds. Where there was once monopoly of publication, there will be no censorship of competing communication channels. Where there was once production monopoly, there will be ability to create anything within the walls of individual homes. Where there is monopolization of farming, the norm will be self-sustained homes and marketplaces throughout the world. Innovation of law options would predictably remove much or most of the punishment mentality while maintaining natural consequences of problem ownership. Rather than removing children from families, for example, innovation may include the supervised rehabilitation of parent in an atmosphere of guidance, education, and support in order for issues of neglect to be overcome through treatment rather than creating unnecessary despair that comes from losing a child and worsening the emotional state of the parent, nearly ensuring the use of more drugs to cope. Such services, also being openly competitive, would strive for top service as they would know their clients could choose a different facility if dissatisfied. Prisons would presumably evolve to much grander residences of opportunity for income and education as well as treatment and positive reform, as organizations would compete for reputable enhancement of the lives of those who were misfortune to fall into behaviors of aggression. These also being facilities that must maintain their client's satisfaction, else their clients can freely opt to transfer to a facility of their choosing, limited only by affordability and availability, quality of facility facility and treatment is anticipated to be driven high. Police and military in such an environment need no distinction, of course, being the providers of security and protection of person and property, given no jurisdiction or authority, as none are logically valid, and no borders other than private exist, nor do nations nor governments. Rather than show might, 
control and enforce more cooperative, therapeutic, and de-escalating measures will likely evolve as it would be disadvantageous in a competing industry to have a reputation of handling situations with archaic, clumsy, and brutal methods, especially when the entire industry is reaching higher for alternatives of intervention that, for example, don't lead to fatality or heightened crisis, but rather include methods of non-lethal, safe neutralization of threat and, most importantly, proactive prevention of criminality through efforts to educate and guide people for quality and harmonious living as such also is of financial interest to those providing a protection insurance since incident would incur much greater financial cost to them than no incident. Voluntary regulation is a choosing to subscribe to the services of an accreditation provider and the accreditation provider has every motive to set and impose high standards for all of its subscribers, thus ensuring that it is reputable for maintaining quality and that its signage reassures customers that such business is up to their high standards. Frequent checks to ensure compliance to quality standards and cooperation by the subscriber with the provider of accreditation makes the relationship symbiotic and without runaway regulations that favor special interest groups while issuing disadvantage to the rest, as is rampant in law monopoly centralized law from child protection to ensuring a restaurant is clean and competent in food handling decentralized law is the way forward the organic evolution of best practices would be a continuum as technology plays its role in the innovation of this industry of competing law and such law has far greater flexibility for allowing all manner of innovation we do not have to look far to see that decentralized law is already in use among parties like companies who mutually agree to forego the painstaking and cumbersome process of centralized court proceedings and instead opt to present their dispute or conflict before a panel of impartial arbiters who can swiftly provide decision on how to proceed in the conflict. Rather than endure the entanglements of the applicable courts, parties can agree to be bound by the speedy process of TV court, where all can see the entire process and the decision provider has reputation fully on the line for any bias or neglect, thus driven to be vigilant in a fair ruling. Though these and more options are available within our legal environment, they pale considerably to the vast exponential plethora of innovations that would arise from the free and open industry of law. Due to the inclusive nature of decentralized law, a world of banishing borders and diversifying cultures would ensue, disrupting tradition, breaking barriers in understanding, opening minds from their prejudices, softening the hearts of mankind to break down the callous mentality of team against team, nation against nation, brother against brother. Non-aggression has the power to dismantle the grandest of barricades that stand in the way of betterment of all life. Time to field test decentralized law.